Hello, this will be my second tutorial related to uh, quick simulation run on CAD softwares uh, specif specifically for FDM 3D printed parts uh, this time I'm doing this on Fusion 360 of course these are just uh, intro kind of videos very basic information for novice users or basic Fusion 360 users uh, and the next videos that I will be presenting even more detailed more advanced functions that some of those softwares have especially using more um, capable uh, simulation softwares like uh, Abacus uh, now I'm gonna run the same setup I did on my previous video on SolidWorks I'm gonna design the same part a simple beam and add 100 Newton load on it of course when you do a CAD of a part that it's intended to be 3d printed uh, you don't usually uh, have the features of the layers la layer orientation and the shell uh, design of the part so after you build the solid component uh, for these simulations it's really helpful to convert the solid body to a shell with usually a wall thickness similar to the wall thickness you'll use in the print settings so 1.6 millimeter as in uh, four parameters is a common value um, of course any 3d printed part has an infill percentage but um, infill usually when you're printing quick uh, which is 10 to 20 percent does have a mechanical effect or a mechanical uh, reinforcement but it is a minimal effect that generally it would be even better to ignore and assume there is no infill and design the part to work without it and then when you have the infill that's an additional warranty or additional reinforcement for it to work even better so uh, as you see here i'm just designing the beam i'm designing the base um, if you're familiar with uh, the software i assume you know what i'm doing uh, if you're not familiar with the software you can find a lot of uh, online tutorials on how these softwares run uh, and if you think um, you need more detail on how this path was modeled uh, I could maybe answer your questions uh, in the comment section so I still just need to add the two holes for the screws as I did say before I'm not uh, doing this in a very accurate manner I'm doing it in an approximate manner uh, to give you mo mostly an idea about the simulation rather than the, uh, the CAD modeling so but I do go quickly through the CAD modeling if you just got the software and you even want to learn the basics of CAD and how it runs you can watch this video again uh, probably in a slower run it slower and try to follow the same steps create the same part now we have the part ready what we need to do next before we even move to any simulation is assign a material for this part so this is the part it's still unsaved I will save it and call it test one and now you see the name he changes to test one now I can right click uh, on this entire part you can see it's highlighted and I can go to physical material and same as I did in SOLIDWORKS uh, I will assign this to be ABS for fusion if you want to assign ABS you have to drag it and drop it on the part you see the color has slightly changed and that means the part material has uh, switched from what it was before and uh, it doesn't show here but if you go again and go to physical it will show you have this in the in this design this material now which wasn't here the default was steel so now we have the material ABS and uh, in fusion you can switch uh, in the main menu here to simulation so now we're switching to simulation this will be a static stress create study and in any software usually it's always good to follow the steps from right to left and that usually guides you through the steps you need to do so what we did here already is we selected the study created the study this is a feature if your part geometry is complicated you can do some simplification but this is usually a bit of advanced step uh, then comes the material selection which we already did even before entering in simulation phase um, if I click on it here you can see it says already ABS so nothing to change there what we need to do is fix where the screws will be that will be the constraint and the type is fixed we don't have any other type for now we'll assume this is properly fixed by the by the screws 
and you have to select the surface here and the other surface here I mean, selected both by clicking OK that is done I need to add the load uh, this will be a structure load which means a force of course you could do pressure moment bearing and other kind of loads but this is force location will be at the tip of course the orientation we want it to be downward and the amplitude 100 so I change this to 100 and I need to orient it by clicking here on angle and I can orient this to be 90 degrees downward so now we have 190 degrees downward and uh, you can see here there's a, a small uh, lock and that means these this is a surface that is fixed same here so we have fixed this from one side and we have applied the load on the other side and what we need to do next is create a mesh uh, mesh is the let's say a, a divid, uh, way to divide this volume into much smaller volumes to calculate same as I did in SOLIDWORKS before I even move forward there's one step to adjust with the CAD which is I need to convert this to a shell so I go back to design and in design this is the function feature for shell I just need to uh, uh, activate it select the body assign a thickness which again will be the same as I did in SOLIDWORKS 1.6 it's the same geometry as SOLIDWORKS uh, on the outside you don't see anything changing but if I go to the section view you will see this is now a thin shell body and now I can go again to simulation again nothing appears to have changed but in, on the inside it is, a, it is a thin shell and just by activating the view for mesh it, uh, it doesn't have a mesh yet so it asks if I want to compute it I'll say yes and the good thing about uh, Fusion is that it shows you the final mesh. So this is, would be the final mesh part. Uh, of course, these are very large elements. There's an there's a advantage when these are so large, calculation is fast. And when you do them much smaller, calculation is slow, but the accuracy increases. For a part like this, it's not too critical to adjust this too much. And maybe that will be, I'll show that in another much longer video, maybe a bit more focused on the mesh. And we can talk about that. So now I have a mesh, I have a fixed base, I have the force. What I need to do is if I now go to results, it also knows that there's no results, didn't run the simulation yet. It asked me would, you, would I like to run it? So I'll say yes. There's an important feature that's nice in Fusion. Uh, this simulation can be run, uh, run on the cloud or locally. Uh, if you run it on the cloud, sometimes it goes to a waiting list. Uh, it could take a long time to, to get the chance to be run. Of course, I'm running locally. I have my PC here capable of doing these simulations, and this is not a very demanding one. So I'll switch to locally, and then I'll, say, I'll go for solve, which will initiate simulation. As you saw on maybe the SOLIDWORKS video, this takes seconds. Um, com comparing now to Fusion, this also took relatively seconds, and it's done. You can already see some results in the background. I rotate to a proper side view and you can see here we're looking at the uh, we looking at the load case we should re reset this to uh, actual deformation so this is like the realistic expected uh, deformation and you can see here um, the displacement is large um, we haven't added any um, factors uh, we switch to stress now we're seeing actually the value that's more useful uh, I'm not using any factors in the design I'm, it's better to look at stress as I said ABS fails at around 50 so anything that's already green to yellow is already a failed area um, because the mesh is large here you don't see too much details but you still see areas where where failure will happen and that means this area needs to have a bit of rounding fillet. Uh, the part probably needs to be maybe shorter, uh, maybe thicker walls. So, but at least what we learn is the part will fail. And if you switch to displacement, we can see that the part will move downward up to 70 millimeter. 
So uh, SolidWorks showed us 80 millimeters, so Fusion is under valuing maybe the displacement, but of course the meshing is not the same and the softwares have small differences and the materials also have small differences. But we can learn from both that this base will be bending, which we need to consider. And there will be relatively large stresses at the base near the screws and near these 90 degree um, um, yeah, geometries. So here is where you usually need to add a fillet or a rounding. That's it mainly for Fusion, just going quickly uh, on the software. I will maybe add more detailed uh, videos going into more detail, but this is just a quick intro. If you have a pot, you want to run a quick simulation, you want to see where the stresses will concentrate, that will help you improve it. And as I mentioned also in the previous video, in this specific part, it would be better to print this entire body laying on the print bed, maybe in this orientation remove this gap so it does directly lay there without the need of support would be helpful to add ribs here to reduce the this bending so you add an extra rib along the length to uh, reduce the bending would be definitely helpful to have rounding in these corners uh, definitely helpful to have additional material here um, so there's a lot to do in such a simple part to improve it and reduce the, the chances of failure that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please write them down in the comments. And thank you.